um, and a few others. Uh, and he also writing um, uh, iPhone article for Apple officially. So he's really, you know, one of the best, oh, you know, person to, uh, you know, like go over uh, the iPhone. And um, uh, so, uh, do you need more time? Or? No, we're good. Okay. Let's do so. It. One more thing I wanted to check is, you know, how sure. many of you are first time here to this group? Yes. Raise your hand. First visitor, I mean, attend. Oh, man, now we're too far away. Oh, sorry. Okay, good. Um, now, you know, um, you know, how many of you actually got approved um, by Apple, you know, the develop iPhone develop program? Can you raise your hand? Oh, good. Wow. Okay. Now, just, you know, a very quick, uh, you know, survey. Uh, you know, uh, maybe we can hold this uh, later, but... Uh, uh, I think I should hold the, uh, the questions later. Okay, uh, so a couple of things to start up. I just want to put this out there so that you can probably play along if you want. You can go and download the code here uh, or download the slides. Keynote set that up for me. I don't know how it's going to work, but it should be cool. Uh, just to clear things up, I am not the author of this. So I would have loved to have written an iPhone book at the moment because it's hot and that would be great. But I'm not the author of that. Okay, uh, a little bit more on your uh, questions for everybody. How many people have iPhones? Ah, okay, and how many people have an Android phone? Okay, I just want to judge the size of the potential audience of people who are going to buy the apps that we might develop. Okay, so the idea is here that tonight I'm going to show two different applications, one on the iPhone and the other on Android. They're both very simple but they're exactly the same thing in different implementations, obviously. Um, my daughter, who's six years old, is, uh, well, won't get in the way there. My daughter, who's six years old, plays this game called uh, the Mad Minute at school. And the idea is that you do as much math as you possibly can in one minute. And all the questions are, you know, all the, the things are really simple. It's like eight plus four and seven plus six and that sort of thing. And you're trying to do it as quickly as you can. So get that, that simple math or simple subtraction down really rope. So I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. And she loves computers and stuff. So I want to go and build that on the iPhone and on Android. So I created a thing called Mad Math. And you can get the code there at Mad Math TGZ. And you can use that. You know, I'm not one of those <laughs> licensing guys. You can use this to your heart's content. Do it. Yeah, I don't care. Don't even reference me. I don't care. So. <laughs> What we'll do is I'll show you how this works on the iPhone. We'll do a little experiment here. Can, you, oh, can we turn off the light or something? Maybe see, try to get this a little better. Can we turn on the lights? We, that's getting better. We're getting close to something. Huh, okay. So, whoa, hey now. So can people see that at least? Mm -hmm. That's that little keynote application that I'm using to control the slides. So we'll get out of that, because that's, that's too much fun. <laughs> and then we'll go over to this. So this is Mad Math. <laughs> OK, everybody know uh, the answer to that, 13? <laughs> OK, so you hit, let's see, so you hit, OK, you take a button. Hit yeah, 8, I guess, in this case. And then it tells you, oh, you got a certain amount right, and blah, 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 blah. And one of the cool things you can do is you can turn it outside, and it changes the orientation and all that sort of stuff. Cute, huh? OK. So we're going to do that on both the iPhone and the, uh, oh, <laughs> hey, that's cool. OK. We're going to do that on both the iPhone and uh, Android. So everybody following along so far? Don't feel free to, you know, go, hey, okay, yeah, we're going. OK, good. OK, so iPhone, Android, Mad Math. So we'll start with the iPhone, maybe take a bio break after that, then get into Android. And then we'll circle back to the iPhone. And because Bess asked me to add in some cool stuff, I actually added some uh, accelerometer stuff into the app and adds, added some sound. So we'll get to see that too. It plays sound. And it's not that tough. But uh, OK. All right. So how do we do, uh, how do we build an iPhone app? You got to get a Mac. Uh, got to get your Xcode going. Uh, 
then you've got to develop on a simulator. There's a really good iPhone simulator, but it doesn't do things like the accelerometer or uh, sound input, that sort of stuff. Obviously, you need the phone, the GPS. Uh, you get the developer license, which I think is $99, something like that. Yeah. And then you, uh, you, know, you use the actual device, because obviously you probably want to do some stuff like GPS and whatnot uh, in your app. And then uh, once you got it all finished out, you hopefully deploy it to the Apple Store, which can have its little caveats of you know, them rejecting it <laughs> if they don't like you. OK, so who's familiar with Xcode? Anybody write anything in Xcode? OK, not much. OK, so it's basically an IDE. I'm sorry if this is a little scrunchy. OK, but basically, you, you, you bring this up, and you can build uh, via a template. Uh, an iPhone, an i, uh, Cocoa Touch application, and it, it will set up all the uh, files for you. There's a couple of different templates you can choose from. In this case, I chose a view template, which is just the kind of a template where you drag and drop buttons on it and so on and so forth. Um, and then it builds, you know, all the, the the required files and some kind of framework code for you. So you basically have your project navigator a file navigator, and then your editor. You can go and double click on one of these and then bring up so that you get a full screen. It's a yeah, nice little IDE. And it connects to the, the simulator and the, and the phone so you can do debugging. OK. So once you have all that set up, then you go to the interface builder, which is where you build the, the interface. It's really kind of cool. You get your control palette. You can drag and drop. These are buttons and text labels and all that sort of stuff. Drag and drop onto here. This is, it's a nice little kind of model view controller system. So there's this uh, controller which hosts this view where we've gone and put a couple of controls. So we put the text box, a label the, which is stuck to the bottom, and then four buttons. And then one of the things that we do, which is kind of cool, is uh, how it's so there's two things here. There's connecting, and then there's also this kind of springs and struts layout. So you noticed when I rotated the phone that it actually rotated and changed the sizing on everything, right? Like the buttons kind of expanded a little bit, and the label kind of came up a little bit, that sort of thing. So that's all done using springs and struts. So basically, you select one of these controls. In this case, you have you know, this one selected, the button. And you say, this kind of locks. So when the screen changes size, this, the, it's going to be locked to the top and to the side. That's how we get these red bars here. And then the size, the horizontal size, the width, is going to change dynamically. But other than that, it's going to remain the same. So we lock this one on this side. We lock this one on that side. Change the size, change the width. Lock this one to the bottom. And voila, without actually doing any code at all, the, the whole interface changes as you go from different orientations. So kind of cool. And then what, the way that we connect it to the code is through uh, these connectors. So we create some outlets in the code, and then we connect them with, to the buttons using this uh, connections panel. So I'm going pretty fast, because I know we're kind of tight on time. But am I, am I losing anybody? No? You seem OK so far? OK. And then on top of this, there's a whole uh, help system, which will give you uh, all the information you need on their framework. Now, what are you writing in? You're writing in Objective-C. And anybody actually write in Objective-C very often? I mean, that's the, the only places you're going to write in Objective-C are for the iPhone or for the Mac, the desktop. And on the desktop, you can use Java. Um, so you, it's kind of an alien thing. There's this whole um, next step, which is where it originally came out of, set of libraries. Uh, and this will help you navigate through that maze. Uh, 